If you can, wave your hands. <laughs> oh, good, good. Maybe there might be a little lag in there. So um, this class is offered both here and on the Ridgeville campus, and it's also offered online. And I also record the video, so if you, happen to, if you have to miss a day, you can uh, go and watch uh, one of the videos um, online for the class. So I think that works out for uh, everyone's advantage all right, to be able to do that. Um, if you have a question, especially at Ridgeville, press the little button in front of you, and then you can ask the question and um, get the response back from me. Uh, what I also plan on doing is, uh, for the folks that are at Ridgeville, you can use Skype to contact me during the lab session uh, if you have any questions when you're working on the lab assignments. Um, I'll be in, uh, in uh, the lab here at the main campus, and uh, you can ask questions over there. Um, so... Um, what uh, today's class will be is there'll be an overview of the uh, of the class material, um, the well, you know the way the the class will be set up as far as assignments and and things such as that, um, and we'll get into probably for the last twenty minutes to half hour of the actual material uh, for the class. So that's what we're going to do. What I'd like to do though to start off is to take attendance. All right. And if we could do that, introducing ourselves very briefly. Um, and let's start with uh, the folks from Ridgeville. This will be a good practice to make sure that the microphones and all that uh, are working. So if the two folks at Ridgeville, if you would press your button and uh, tell your name, we can go from there. Okay, I can't hear you. You must have pressed the button because the mic's on you. Can I, can, can whoa. I thought I heard something. Try one more time. Yes, I can. And your name is? My name is Brandon. Brandon and James. Well, nice, uh, nice to meet you, folks. Uh, again. Um, if uh, you have questions during lab, um, I plan on having Skype set up uh, in the lab, and I would assume it's set up at the Ridgeville lab, too. I'm not 100% sure of that. But if it's not, we'll make sure it's out there, and that way we can get any questions uh, that you have uh, answered. All right. Um, let's start with the folks here, then. And go ahead. Let's start over here. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Okay behind on clicking the people's uh, <laughs> I didn't come to get any of you I know both the people here from Ridgeville if you could pass around and sign it that way we won't ask you to do it again pardon me yeah they can sorry folks no, no I'm just kidding um, all right uh, how many of you in this class you're with using Angel, which is a course management tool. Let me ask if there's anyone that is not familiar with using Angel. If you are not familiar with it, I can I can give you a hand at last um, on how it works. Um, essentially, all the materials for the class will be on Angel. 
Um, that's just a, a win for everyone. Uh, in addition, I've combined all the classes into one big class. So both my online section, the folks here on campus, and the Ridgeville folks are all listed in as being part of just one class. So everyone logs into the same class. That way, you worry about like keeping things consistent. And if you miss a day, you can get the syllabus or whatever assignments were given that day and communicate between uh, sessions that way. So I think it's, it's a good situation for everyone. Now, I will extend the offer for anyone who wants to that is in the online class to come in here on campus. All right. I also extend for the original folks, if you would prefer to come here on a particular day, let's say you are on campus anyhow for something else, you're welcome to stop in here. And likewise, if any of you live out in Ridgeville way, you're welcome to go and sit in on the Ridgeville campus session. So I try to treat all these three classes just like one big class. And I think it just is a win for everyone in general. All right, let's log out, take a look at what we have. And what we have is um, most of the apps for this class place on the app. And it will look a little different. So you won't have to manage. Um, if I do get really behind at the end of the semester, I enable this for everyone and give you my password so that you can go in and grade your own stuff. But usually that doesn't happen until around week 12 or 13. Uh, I'm just kidding about that. It, it has yet, all right? So who knows? I should read this. People on campus or in Ridgeville are welcome to take a look at that. But essentially, I'm going to cover the stuff that's contained uh, on that. All right. I'm going to go very quickly once, and then we'll go back and cover some of these things in more detail. The syllabus, we all know what a syllabus is. We'll cover that uh, in more detail in a second. Information for educational pro, uh, projects. This deals with what you're allowed to do as far as taking pictures from a website and using it in your project. So let's say, for example, one of the assignments you decide to do uh, about the Cleveland Browns. All right, and you might want to go and take some pictures from the Cleveland Browns website and incorporate them on your page. Is that going to do? Well, there's different laws concerning that, given the fact a school, and, and this is an academic project, and you're not to make for your sporting goods store, or even that you're a fan who is doing it for their own personal reasons. In an education, you're allowed to use within limits a certain number of pictures per website. And the most important thing is, is like anything else that you'd use for, from anyone else, uh, anything that you'd use from anyone else, any other materials, you should give credit. Like in a term paper, if you quote someone, you should give credit. Well, if you use a picture from a website, you should give credit for it. So this sort of summarizes control. Um, a set of principles of that are to not much and to give credit where credit is due. But I would urge you all to read this in more detail. Uh, and if you have specific questions, you can ask me. Generally, as long as you give credit in this class, you're only probably taking a picture or two anyhow. So you, you should be OK. Next one is the week one folder, which we will be uh, hitting uh, a little bit later on. Uh, we'll come back to this one um, at the very end of class to, to touch base on what's contained in here. Each week, for the most part, we'll have a folder. And the folder will have a list of things that are sorted to be covered that week, and it will have what your assignment is for the week. All right. For example, here to do this week, I have a list of what, what the goals are for this week, what activities I ask you to, uh, I would ask you to do, and then finally, uh, what the assignments are. And we'll come back to the second uh, part, the assignment, um, towards the very end of the class. I have a course folder that I've sort of accumulated throughout the years I've been teaching this course. And some of these links is popular work. And if they, if they don't work, let me know and I can eliminate them. Uh, additionally, if you find any new good links, bring them to my attention. Um, and, and I can post them up there to update it. 
Uh, a lot of lecture, I will say that I source for this. For example, when we're talking about colors in HTML, I might say, hey, well, there's a resource in Angel for that. No, what I mean is in this folder, there's a doc that talks about that. And you can go through and find it and, and find the material. So this is almost like uh, additional information, sort of a supplement to your uh, textbook. All right. Semester project. Um, I have some bad news for folks in this class. Uh, there aren't any exams. All right, so that's the bad news. The good news is that instead of an exam, you have a semester project. And a semester project is done in two parts. There's a design, which is sort of the planning phase, where you think about what you're going to do and think about how you're going to approach the problem and think about how, uh, what you're going to put on a website to solve a particular problem. Then there's the where you go and you create the site. Um, we will go over this probably in a couple of weeks, but it would be great if you could read through this so that you have some background before we start our discussion on it. So within, you know, you don't have to do it today. Um, if you really want to, you're allowed to, but um, within the next couple of weeks, be sure that you go through and read all the documents in here because we will be going over them. And it's an important part of the class, uh, both in terms of, of your learning and in terms of um, grade-wise. I mean, it's 35 out of 100 points. So that's over a third of, of the points are, uh, come from um, this project. All right, a discussion forum. A discussion forum is a way for you to ask questions um, without uh, being here. All right? uh, it's a chance for the people that are in the online section to ask questions. And it's a chance for you to ask questions if you're working on something and you have a question. The general rule of thumb is that if it's a question that deals may with maybe something specifically related to you, then you should probably send it as an email instead of posting it in the discussion forum. But if it's a question that you think others might benefit from too, like for example, gee, I didn't really understand the lecture about making links today. Could, could you, you know, what, you know, how again, or something along those lines. That's a question that maybe other people in the class have as well, because, you know, there's a rule of thumb that they, you know, the teachers always say that you don't understand something, there's a good chance that other people in the class don't understand it as well. So post those kinds in the discussion forum. Don't ask either way. Either send it as an email or post it to the discussion board. But that's sort of the guide you should go through when you're thinking about what to post where. Feel free to post in here good resources that you find. If you find something interesting or you find something that was useful or helped explain something to you, feel free to post it in there as well. So um, this is just a place for the three classes to sort of share resources, ideas, questions and um, get those uh, answered. Last, not terribly relevant for this class, but I do include it simply because there are some people in this class that are CISS majors and are taking other classes. And this is um, instructions for getting free software from Microsoft via their program, which is called DreamSoft. So uh, it's, it's, it's not, unfortunately, anything like Microsoft Office, because that's really where they make their money, but it's a lot of their developers' tools. So if you're taking other classes then you need Visual Studio or something else, um, you're welcome to take a look at this and uh, see if it benefits. There isn't anything uh, that they offer that would really help this class specifically. So I just include it there just as an additional resource for some of my students that um, are taking some of the other classes. All right. So what we're going to do now is talk about the syllabus for a while. Um, we will then talk about some of the basic course material. And then we will uh, roll back and talk about the assignment that is due uh, and when it's due. All right. Any questions at this point? You still with us, Ridgeville? All right. I'm going to ask you guys, like, every once in a while to, like, make a movement or a gesture because I took one of these IVDL classes 
And the temptation for me was like to get a big cardboard cut out of myself and stick it in the back of the room, you know, when I was a student in one of them. So I'm going to make sure you guys aren't doing that one on me. All right? So hopefully we'll keep you interested and we'll ask you for, uh, you know, um, some feedback to make sure that everything's still going well and you're still hearing me and all that. All right. The syllabus. I'm not going to insult you by reading it. I know you love when teachers read their PowerPoint slides to you and you love to have a teacher read all the, but I'm not going to do that. All right. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the highlights of the stuff that I consider to be most important um, in the syllabus. Right off the bat, the very top, I think, is important because it contains different ways to contact me. All right? And we'll talk about those for a second and uh, before we move on. All right? I, um, but in general, it's better to use one of the other methods to contact me. If you're away from a computer and you have a phone, you know, feel free to call that number. Um, if you need to, to get me something, you need to tell me something. In general, it's better to email me, though, as far as phoning. If you happen to know I'm in my office during my office hours, then by all means, you can call. But it's probably better to email, given that I check my email a lot more often than I check my voicemail. Um, I determine my office hours yet. I will post them when I do. All right. If the office hours I come up with don't work for you, contact me. You can make other arrangements. All right? During these office hours or during the other time we arrange, we have some options. We can meet in person. You can come up to my office and I can answer questions. We can discuss over the phone. We can go on to Skype and discuss things via Skype. Or we can chat online. All right. I, uh, if you notice, I walked in using a cane today. I had an accident in spring semester, and I was not on campus for much of my uh, much of the spring semester. And I conducted office hours for some of my classes, and even delivered some lectures via Skype. And I'll tell you what, it worked out pretty good because I see the screen of the people that are what they're working on, and if they have questions, they can say, I don't understand what's wrong with this line of code, and so on. So that is a good idea. All right. You're also welcome to sit in on any of my other classes' labs. All right. I have a morning and a evening class, uh, Mondays through Thursday. All right. So Monday and Wednesday, this is a morning class. But I have an evening class. I also have a Tuesday day class and a Tuesday evening class. You're welcome to come to any of those class labs. All right? See, I classically have about an hour for a lecture and about an hour for a lab. And usually, for the most part, the lab is your time to work through the, the assignments and to, to have me there and, and get feedback and ask me questions and so on. All right. That's pretty much all my class. On occasion, I might have an activity in one of my labs, but for the most part, the lab is sort of a free work time. Well, if you need additional assistance and you can't make it to the office hours, but you can come to one of my other labs, you're welcome to do that too. I'm pretty much just in answer question mode in those labs, so I can answer your questions just as well as I can answer the other students' questions. And by the same token, they're invited, the other students in all my classes are invited to come to this lab. So if you see someone in this lab that I haven't seen before, and I'm talking about some unusual topic, they could be a student from one of my other classes coming in. And that goes again for the Ridgeville folks, that goes for the online folks. You're welcome to come to any of my other class labs if you need some additional face-to-face -face help. So, we have should probably, you know, which isn't the best way, but it is a way. We have email, we have office hours, we have appointments of office hours, we have other classes, we have Skype and email and online chat. 
The point is, there's a lot of ways to get a hold of me. Yes? Uh, what's your Skype? My Skype is my Pat Zellers. I was yesterday, so I noticed all these things that were missing that I want to put in, but I, I, I needed to finish up uh, uh, the syllabus, and I post this information, but it's Mike.Zellers. All right. But there's a lot um, and that right responsibility as a student is when you have difficulty, when you have to one way or another, you know, it, again, feel free to ask me in class. If you don't want to ask me in class, ask me in lab. If you don't want any of those other things, feel free to pursue one of these other methods. Yes. Okay, I will, um, I will let them know in, uh, in distance learning. I don't know if there's a problem with my mic or, or what. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if you heard that uh, in the control room, uh, if you're listening, but um, they said I keep cutting in and out so uh, over at the Ridgeville campus. All right. So you have to me halfway. I think most instructors are willing to do what we can to help you become successful in this class, but we can't do it unless we know you're having difficulties, and therefore, um, the worst if you ask questions is I may give you a hint and not ask directly and sort of nudge you in the right direction because things that you discover for yourself are often uh, learned better than when someone simply spoon feeds you the information. All right. Yes. Um, it is a Word document. I don't know why it would do that. But we can take a look at that in lab if you want. I don't know. We, yeah, I, I didn't put that out there, so. I don't know. We can take a look at it in lab. Okay. All right. The next part of the syllabus discusses the description and the outcomes. Um, these are important. These are why we're here. These are the aims of the class. When you're out of the class, you should be able to do these things. Oops. So take a minute to read them and read through them. Materials of the class, um, the text listed there. Um, you do need some sort of storage media to store your stuff. Uh, any of you that have had a lab here know that if you finish something and reboot your computer, what you have created is gone. And it starts with sort of a fresh image of the disk. So therefore, um, you need to save the stuff that you work on in lab so that you can turn it in or finish it or whatever you need to do. Um, it is used to communicate with, uh, with the students in this class. So whether you're in the online section or in one of the campus-based sections, it's important that you check ANGEL periodically. All right. Um, All right, that's all right. Um, okay, I hope uh, they did come with a new microphone, so hopefully um, that will straight up the issue, straighten up the issues that you're having. All right. Um, so again, check Angel periodically um, because I will uh, communicate. Um, I'll let you know, for example, if there's questions that maybe I don't know the answer for in lab or in, in class. You know, I'm not going to say I know everything. Sometimes people come up with questions and I have no clue what the answer is. And I'll do some research and I'll, I'll post it. 
All right. Um, things such as if I needed to cancel class on a given day, you know, if I was ill or whatever, I'll post that to Angel. See, I'll say that so that will be motivation for you to check um, Angel periodically, at least. All right. But I do communicate with Angel. The next section is discussing my approach. And again, I'm not going to read it to you verbatim, but the first sentence in a way says it all. This is your class. All right. My job is to facilitate you learning the material. Um, but it's your class. And if you have any questions, they're important. They're important to me, and they're probably important to your classmates, too. So whatever I can do to help you, I will certainly make the effort to do so. So if you need something explained again, if you need an additional example or whatever, just let me know. Here's a whole bunch of college policies. Here is my policy on lateness. Um, I am very flexible as far as late assignments go. A lot of instructors won't even look at something if it's late, but I do. But I also reserve the right to deduct if I think it's appropriate. So if you are going to turn something in late because A, it's a particular assignment that you had difficulty with and you've been asking me questions or you're under the weather and haven't been able to work on it or you have some other personal issue, just let me know. And again, you don't have to divulge any personal details if you, uh, if, if you don't feel it's appropriate. But just let me know so I know not to deduct. All right? If the student is late with a assignment, that's not that big a deal All right, to me, frankly. If a student is continually late with every assignment, that indicates to me that there's a bigger issue, that they're, that they're likely having problems with the class and either they need to spend more time or they need some additional assistance. All right, so kind of use that as your guide. I, I aim to be very flexible as far as this go, uh, goes. The grades for this class consist of homework which is approximately 65 points, the project design which is 15 points, and the completed project which is 20 points, and that adds up to 100%. When I say the homework is approximately 65 points, that's what I aim for, but sometimes I'll hit 63 points or 68 points or in that ballpark. What I do then is I prorate it. So if it's 68 points, I'll multiply it by whatever fraction that is, 65 over 68, to get it down to 65 points. So you have 65 points, and again, I'll prorate it if I need to. And again, other than that, standard 90 to 100 is an A, and so on down the line. Here is the schedule. Um, by week, what topics we're going to cover, and what is due at the end of the week. Do keep in mind that my aim is to make this class, how do I want to say it, individual for the folks that are in this class. So if you have questions about something and we get into a long discussion about some topic and we go a little off the schedule, that's okay with me. All right? um, we will on occasion probably get a little bit ahead of the game and may fall a little behind of the game. So this schedule is just meant to sort of be a rough guide. It will sort of help you with your reading and again, it's best if you read the material before you come to class. All right? um, the assignments are due the Wednesday of the indicated week. So for example, uh, something I assign this week, your first assignment, will be due Wednesday of next week. The thing that I, so what I assign during week one is due Wednesday of week two. What I assign during week two is due Wednesday of week three, and so on down the line. So any assignment that you see out there is due the following Wednesday from the time that it was originally posted. All right. Um, you have an assignment virtually every week except in week 11 your project design is due and then finally during finals week your final project is due. Alright, so take a look at the syllabus and the other documents, read through them and bring any questions that you have to class. Alright, now this is like 
the movies where you go and there's like an hour's worth of trailers before the feature <laughs> attraction. And now the feature attraction, where we actually start talking about web development. All right? You know, we've all seen web pages, and we've all seen the kinds of things that are on web pages. What web page should I visit today? Does anyone have a, a choice? Let's look at, I watched the Browns for the first time in years, and that probably wasn't a good idea. But let's, yeah, let's look at the Browns. The highlight of the game, by the way, is there was a little one minute piece, or 30 second piece maybe, about my friend. They, they did a, a little blurb about my friend Amy, who's an artist. I don't know if you, Amy watched the game. It was like right at the beginning of the game. And one of the, one of the, one of the things she said is that you should be, not be afraid to, be, to do something poorly at first. Because you have to do something poorly at first before you can eventually become good at it. And I thought that was great advice. And that's good advice for students to keep in mind. And it also is good advice for the Browns to keep in mind. And they have, they have the doing things poorly down fairly well. And I hope in subsequent weeks they get to the doing things well. All right, when we look at this page, we see a lot of stuff. And we can pick another page, maybe one that has less stuff going on. All right, this one. And we look at this. And we can see that web pages consist of a bunch of stuff. All right? There are links on the web pages. A link is something that when you click on it takes you to another page. All right? There are images on the page. All right? There are headlines on the page. All right? This is different than this. This is a link this is a headline. This is a link. These are just words. So there's all kinds of different stuff that are on web pages. All right? Right off the bat, and we could probably think of more, but we have links, plain old text, headline, and images. If we think about it, there's probably a lot more stuff as well. On some of the pages, there was a little bit of slideshow. Like this, where we have images. That change. But for now, it's enough just to consider some of those basic things. Now, an interesting thing about web pages is you can see the code behind any web page out there. Simply by, I'm, in, I'm using the, the Chrome browser. I right mouse on the web page, and I can click View Source. And I can actually see the code that's behind it. All right. Let's scroll down a bit. All right, to here. It's a simple, plain old text file. You could read this, all right. Because it's just plain old text. Well, the question is then, here we have a plain old text document, yet when we view that within a browser, we don't get plain old text. There were more than just words on that web page. There were words and images and links and headlines, which are sort of different than just plain old words, right? They're typically bigger and might be a different color and so on. So the question is, is how is it that the browser can understand, gee, this over here is meant to be a link, whereas, oh, I don't know. Something else on the page is meant to be an image or just plain text. 
Cleveland Browns defense get a rude awakening versus Rams? That's not a link. Well, actually it is. But some of the other text on the page is not um, a link, but it's just plain old text. The way it does it is through the use of what are called tags. All right? To start out, we're going to study one of, the t one of the three main languages in web development. And that language is HTML. And the word HTML, or the acronym HTML, the HT stands for hypertext. And the ML stands for markup language. Now sometimes when you look at things like this, it really doesn't matter like what the word means or where it came from. But I think it's important for us to consider what these pieces mean. HTML. First of all, hypertext. What do you suppose the phrase hypertext means? And you're welcome to answer at Ridgeville. Hypertext. What's the word hyper mean? If you say someone is hyperactive, what does that mean? Yes, yeah, super. Excessive. Excessive. More somehow more or different than normal or what is or, or what is normally expected. All right. Um if you think in, in, or beyond, maybe, beyond the normal amount of activity, all right? If you think sci-fi, if you, you hear them going, we're going to go into hyperspace now, all right? That means somehow they're going beyond regular space. They're going somewhere else, all right? So the HT stands for hypertext. And what hypertext means is the very thing that we were discussing. This is not just regular text. Web pages don't just consist of words. They consist of more than words. So hypertext means more than words, beyond just words. Thank you. So it's text, but it's hypertext. It's more than just words. The words can be links. The words can be headlines. We could have other things besides words. All right? Markup language then is the second part. And the idea of markup language is that tags are used to tell the browser what particular pieces on a web page means. All right? Now, what do I mean by tags? Tags are sort of like what people do when they highlight their textbook. Let's pretend this is a textbook for the class. All right? And if I said on the bottom of page 38, that's very important. You're going to need to know that for your project and for your assignments. Many students would go and take a highlighter and go, all right, maybe put a circle around it or highlight it, or something along those lines. Question? Oh, no, I was. OK. So. Uh, yeah, you're playing around with your microphone then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, 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 uh, it puts a camera on you. So um, yeah. All right. So that's what markup means. Now. <laughs> Exactly. That reminds me of the great Red and Stimpy. Don't push this button. And he's like, yeah. By the same token, if I said something on the next page was not important, all right, what would you do? Maybe you'd put a big X through it and say, hey, that's out of date. Uh, my, or my instructor says I don't need to worry about that or whatever. All right. You're literally marking up your book. What are you doing? You're taking and you are adding more information. These paragraphs, in other words, aren't equal to you. This paragraph's important because it's going to be, uh, it, it, the project depends on understanding it. And this uh, paragraph is outdated. You don't need to know it. 
So these paragraphs aren't equal, so you mark up the book to show what the paragraph really means, to give some sort of additional information. And that's exactly what we do in HTML. We create a text document, but we put tags in the text document to show what the text means. Now, we have a couple minutes left, so I'm going to start to create a web page. I'm not going to create a complete web page, but I'm going to start to sort of give you an idea what I mean by tags. Then hopefully for the last couple minutes we'll look at the assignment and, and see what uh, you can do with it, um, at least start looking at it today. So to create a text document, I'm going to open up Notepad. There are all kinds of pieces of software that allow you to develop web pages. But in this class, I use just the very simple ones. And so I'm probably going to use Notepad. Why do I use Notepad? I use Notepad because it's going to be on every Windows machine ever. All right? And therefore, I'm not going to use some obscure software that only a couple people have. In addition, Notepad is like the most bare bones simple way that you can use to develop a web page. You got to do all the work yourself. This is the equivalent of baking a cake from scratch. You're going to be doing all the work yourself, which in my mind is an ideal way to learn it. If you use a tool to learn how to do something, to learn to develop web pages, you're learning how to use that tool. You're not learning how to develop web pages. If you take and make a box cake, you're not really becoming a good baker. You're becoming a good, I don't know, someone that can make cakes from a box. All right? So we're going to use Notepad. Now, what are tags in HTML? Tags on HTML start with the less than sign. Then they have the tag name. Then they have the greater than sign. And then they have what's called the end tag. Notice that this and this look the same except the ending tag has a slash in front of it, where the starting tag does not have the slash in front of it. This tells the browser that this text means something special. It's a headline. And addition to that, it's a top level headline. That's what H1 means. It means number one, the highest level headline. Think of this as like being, think of these headlines like being an outline. You know, you have an outline if you're doing a paper about something, you might have three or four main points. And under each main point, you might have a sub point, then you might have another sub point, and so on down the line. All right? So, maybe underneath me, there'll be employment history. Notice that's an H2. Why is it an H2? Well, that's sort of a second level heading. All right, if I was making an outline, the outline would look something like this. Let's say I was doing my family. I might have a top level headline of me. Underneath that, I might have my employment history. my hobbies, I don't know, TV shows I like. Then I might have a second level heading, my cats. And then underneath that I might have Jackson, which is one of my cats. And Kovu, and Kiara, and so on. So underneath Jackson might be how I got them. 
and so on down the line. So I'm building like an outline, you know. Web pages have outlines just like a paper or an article or whatever would have an outline. So when I do this, H1 indicates it's a top level heading. It's a top level topic. H2 means it's a second level. And then I can put a paragraph to explain, you know, to be the actual just plain old text. Not a headline or anything, but the actual text of the article. So, Now, couple thing about couple things about these tags. First of all, they always come in pairs. This corresponds to this. This corresponds to this. And so on. Second thing about them is that they go around particular pieces of text and tell you something about that. So for example, this is not part of the paragraph, right? Because it's not in between the start and end paragraph tag. This is a top level heading. This is not a top level heading. This is a second level heading. How do I know that? This tag isn't part of the, or this text isn't part of the top level heading. It's part of the second level heading. And so on down the line. All right? Now, I can save this and then I can view it in the browser. How do I save a web page from within Notepad? File, save. I have to change this from save file as text file because I don't want it to just be a plain old text file. And I pick all files. Then I'll save it with some name like first.html. And then I'll click Save. Now if you notice, here's the web page. And I can see it on the desktop as well. What did you say that is? I'm sorry. Um, you, you have to go and change it to all files instead of text files. Then you can sh uh, save it to any name you want, .html. I chose first .html. Now, when I double click it, I see the web page through the browser. Now notice that that's a top level heading, so it appears the biggest. This is a second level heading, so it appears a little bit smaller. Finally, this is a paragraph, so it just appears like a basic paragraph. All right. How does a browser know to do it that way? It knows to do it that way because I told it to do it that way via these tags. Now these are just three of the tags. We're going to cover a lot more tags in this class. But each one of the tags does this. It tells the browser, hey, this isn't just plain old text. Treat this piece of text this way. All right? Now, your first assignment, um, for some assignments you get to pick a topic. For some assignments I supply the topic. The first assignment, I want you to look up three different technologies, three different languages that we're going to be covering in this class. Oops, wrong class. I want you to look up HTML, then look up HTML5, then look up CSS. Then you will create a web page that has an article about each of these topics, summarizing what you've learned and so on. Now, you don't quite have enough information based on what we covered today to do this entire assignment. But you do, you should have enough to get started. At the very least, you could start doing Google searches on these topics to familiarize yourself with these topics. Then if you read ahead a little bit in chapter one, 
uh, and take and extend the notion of tags that I talked about, um, you should be okay. All right. Any questions? So this is due Wednesday of next week. This will be due Wednesday of next week, right. We won't have class on Monday of next week because of Labor Day, but um, I think it's Labor Day, right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it will be, it, it's due Wednesday. Yes? Um, what is back there? The book came with online code. Oh, um, I'll have to take a look look at that. Um, my copy of the book didn't have that uh, in it because I I probably have a. Uh, I'll have to take a look uh, to see. I think that's a new edition. It's probably the example code. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just additional material. It probably. Okay, uh, Ridgeville, I think you turn your mic on. <laughs> all right, we'll see. All right, we'll see you up in lab. Talk to you later. If you came in late, please make sure you sign the sheet.